Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by another episode of VVG. It's going to be a quick, sweet, simple little episode on hidden VIN location on these first-gen F-body cars. Now, I said first-gen F-body cars because, well, it covers the Camaros too. Of course, I love the Firebirds, but eh, the Camaro's pretty much his brother. And the VIN numbers are stamped all in the same place. So I'm going to show you where these are at, just in case you need to know. If you want to authenticate a car like a 69 Trans Am convertible, eh, you're probably not going to ever find one of those. But even something rare, a Ram Air 4-bird, Ram Air 3-bird. You might want to know whether that body is the original body or it's been a repop like, you know, Dynacorn. They make these bodies now. And they're nice, but worse yet, maybe it's been VIN swap because it was stolen at one point. It's like, but I'm about to show you where these VIN numbers are at to help protect you and educate you. Let's go check them out. Yeah, we're going to use this as our example car. It's 1969 Firebird, uh, 352 barrel car, the original setup. So nothing really special except for, well, it's a Firebird, so it's still pretty cool in my world. But nonetheless, it's 1967. Start here, actually. would be here on the door jam. 68 and 69 mounted here in the uh, windshield corner, like pretty much any car you see in modern days. This is when they switched over this, it was 1968. Now, if you look really carefully, there's a special fastener that holds the VIN number to the dash panel. Now, that fastener is kind of a special one. So if you've got a oh, super rare car and you want to sell it, some of the scrutinizing people check this fastener and make sure it's the correct one. They make them oh, available on eBay. A little expensive, but... Uh, Keep that in mind, I guess, if you want to go back to original, they are available, but the law says in every state so far that I've checked into, you're not supposed to touch this. You can't move it, can't touch it, can't do anything to it. Now, it doesn't mean, like I said, they make some rivets, but you can do what you want with that information. But nonetheless, all the laws I've found is you are not to tamper with this. Now, it doesn't say that you can't cut the panel out and weld it back in, but let's be honest, it's probably not worth it. Uh, so what you could look for on a car has been maybe doctored, now look here and see the kind of weld marks have been done to the dash. This is the original dash panel, but they also make this dash panel repop because we all know this window frame rots out on these. So how you would reattach the VIN, move the VIN, or don't disturb the VIN, depending on how you read the law, I'll leave it up to you. But let's start here. This is the VIN number for the car. This is the one that matches the title when you're going to go buy the car you currently own it. But the part we're going to be concerned with is the last six digits, which is 133143. Now, don't steal my VIN number, but again, it's not that big of a deal. This is a 352 barrel car, but that's going to be the important number here. Now, some states actually dictate or determine that the vehicle VIN number is the one that's stamped on the engine block. So no matter what happens here, if you've rebodied, stolen, theft, swap, whatever, this VIN number isn't nearly as important as that one. Well, that's kind of a joke because we all know in the 60s, now well, these engines didn't last for long because someone broke them. So the original engine is probably long gone. So if you have one of those states that requires the VIN number on the block, don't know what to tell you in that situation. But Indiana, we're good here. So we're going to use that number there. I want to show you the two places it's stamped on the firewall on the body. The well, first one, imagine the cowling being still bolted under the hoods here, the cowling vent. You should be able to sneak your face down in here and look, you'll see the 133143. That's the last six of my VIN. First two numbers had to do with Pontiac and then get production date. But the important part is last six. Now, the other hidden VIN number, uh, blower motor mounts here, heater box, well, it's stamped upside down right here one three three one four three so i can tell you right now without a shadow of a doubt i don't see any weld marks around those pieces no one's tampered this body this is an original body or at least all front of the car is original so this is an authentic car body the other place it would be was talking about on the engine block on pontiacs you go down by side the timing cover here there's a little number right there well the last six would match the sequence of the vin number if it was the original engine i'm gonna tell you right now that's not the original engine. It's 1974 55 four bolt main. Been converted to a stroke 494. So I didn't get great gas mileage when it's all done. But this is the current project I'm working on. But the point of the video was I want to share where these VIN numbers are at. Hey, so there you have it. There's the hidden VIN locations on first gen F body cars. You know, Firebird or Camaro both are the same. Um, and keep in mind, most of the cars in the early 60s and even into the 70s they had the VIN stamped in multiple places. So just had a great example of a first gen bird in the garage here. I figured it'd be a great time to show you where they were at. They're a little tricky to see when the car is assembled, but uh, if it's a super rare car like a Ram Air 3 or a Ram Air 4 car, or even a Camaro with a big block in it, it's probably worth digging in there to verify the VIN number matches the one on the windshield as one on the cowling and on the by the blower motor, because those are important bits, at least to me, on a numbers matching car, increasing the value that it's not been VIN swapped or, you know, Dynacorn body rebuild. Uh, that's not a bad idea to be rust free, but the law says you can't really move the VIN number around or doesn't matter to you. Or even worse, what if the car was stolen and someone popped the VIN years ago and the person selling it has no idea? 
Well, you can school them on just saying because now you know where the VIN numbers are at. So I've got this car going in progress. I'm going to get this one back together. So if you want to see the completion of this car or the one beside me here getting torn apart and get going too, hit the subscribe button. That's the point of the video is to educate people, drag you along the journey, show you these cars can be built in the garage, and then learn you something in the meantime. So still got a few more hours of daylight. I'm going to get back to wrench on this. So it's going to conclude this video. Of course, if you like what you see, hit the like button just the same, and uh, we'll see you next time.